First of all, thank you for accepting the talk to, the, to this year with you. I'm Daniel Tagli, I'm a PhD student at the University of Nottingham, and I will present the work published in a paper uh, last November in collaboration with uh, Yorgos Antonio, who will talk this afternoon, Antoine Lebel, and my PhD supervisor, Thomas Sotirio. Um, I will talk about spontaneous colorization in neutron stars for a theory that, that contains both the gauss bonnet and the rich scalar couplings. So first of all, let me explain you what spontaneous colorization is. Um, it can be understood as a screening mechanism that allows a compact object, so a neutron stars or a black holes, to have a non-trivial scalar configuration um, close to the compact object or inside the compact object where the gravity is strong. And at the same time, it allows to retrieve GR solutions far away from the compact object. So the theory that is affected by spontaneous scalarization effectively has two branches of solutions. And uh, so the AGR uh, branches of solutions and the scalarized branch of solution. And the transition between the two branches uh, happens when a, third, a certain threshold is crossed. And usually it's a threshold is uh, uh, in compactness or in curvature. And uh, spontaneous scalarization is particularly interesting because it allows to uh, possibly discover new interesting physics um, in regional state of the space time that so far uh, has not been um, really searched for, so where gravity is strong. And at the same time, it, uh, it is in agreement with current observation, on, current observation where gravity is weak. It is uh, inherently a perturbative, a non-perturbative mechanism, but it can be better understood if one performs a perturbative analysis uh, of the phenomenon. So at a linear level, it is triggered by uh, tachyonic instability. So here we have a, a Klein-Gordon scal scalar field equation. And if the scalar field acquires a, ne a negative uh, effective mass square, then the scalar field uh, exponentially grows. And this growth uh, it can be quenched if one takes into consideration the nonlinear ideas of the system. And if this happens, then we are left with a stable configuration of the scalar field around the neutron stars or the black holes. Um, in our work, we studied this particular phenomenon for the theory that here I'm showing, which is the result of a previous work that we did in our research group. And this theory contains all of the terms that can trigger a tachyonic instability so that at a linear level um, triggers spontaneous scalarization. So we have a coupling between the Ritchie scalar and the scalar field with the coupling parameter beta. And we have a coupling with uh, the gauss bonnet invariant, which uh, is, is from is expressed here, uh, coupled to the scalar field, and its coupling parameter is alpha. In principle, there could also be, uh, we could also include a bare mass of the scalar field. Uh, we did not uh, do so in our paper because it's clear that if we just include a positive bare mass of the scalar field, this will uh, simply render GR solutions more stable. Um, and uh, it effectively uh, renders spontaneous scalarization more difficult to achieve. Uh, in principle, there could also be a non-standard kinetic term here, but we are not including it because we uh, showed in previous papers that um, this does not really affect the threshold of scalarization per se. So what we did is we studied this theory uh, and we studied the full system uh, uh, of field equations, so the modified Einstein equation, which I'm not reporting here because it's quite complicated, and the scalar field equation here, where the effective mass square is the following. Um, we studied uh, this system for static spherically symmetric uh, uh, neutron stars, and uh, we uh, looked for a solution to this system uh, that, of course, uh, um, solved the, the, the initial condition of the problem, which are kind of complicated for this theory, but at the same time uh, that allowed for solution with a vanishing scalar field at infinity so that we can retrieve GR at, at spatial infinity. Um, the first main result of our paper was the study of the parameter space. Here I'm showing uh, a spe specific case for an equational state, for an NPA1 equational state. It's not the only one that we consider. We also consider a slight equational state. And in this case, uh, we are focusing on a specific central energy density such that when studied in the GR case, 
this gives an idea mass of uh, 1.12 solar masses. So just to, remember, to remind you, beta is the coupling parameter of the Ritchie scalar and alpha is the coupling parameter of the gauss -Bonnet. Uh Let me explain you briefly what this uh, plot is showing. So this white region is the region where the branch uh, of GR solution is stable. So GR solutions are favored. Um, so uh, if we choose a point in the prompt space here, we will just receive GR. When uh, this first black line is the threshold for, for spontaneous scalarization, so when we cross this threshold, what we have at a linear level is cyclotronic instability. So our system is affected by instability. And uh, each time we cross uh, a black line, we are incre increasing the node of solution, uh, the node of solution that we can find. So in this uh, light gray region, we have only zero node solution, then we have one node solution and zero node solutions and so on. The important part of this plot are these two colored regions. Um, these colored regions are uh, represents areas of the parameter space where we can find a scalarized solution to our full system. So we do not only have an instability at a linear level, we are also able to find solutions of the full system of equation. And in particular, the red region is for zero node solution. The blue one uh, is for one node solutions. We are not including higher node solution to not complicate further the, the plot. But already here, we can see that the parameter space can be constrained from this analysis, uh, especially if we look at this gray region, uh, we can see that um, we know that this gray region GR is not stable. So uh, there is an instability and scalarized solutions are preferred to the GR ones. But at the same time, we are not able to find, uh, I mean, the, the, the full system of equation does not have a solution, either because the initial conditions are not satisfied or because effectively we cannot find a solution that goes to zero at infinity. So we already know that points of the parameter space that um, belongs to these two regions need to be discarded. Um, the second part of our paper focused on the study of the properties of the star, and in particular on the ADM mass and the scalar charge. And uh, here I'm showing, I'm simply showing one plot to just give you an idea of what we did. And I'm showing the ratio between the two because uh, thanks to observation from binary pulsars, we know uh, we know a we can constrain this uh, in this formalism. This is a dimensionless uh, uh, quantity, so we know that we can constrain Q over M. And uh, I'm not going into the details why this has to do with sensitivities. Um, I have a slide if you want to uh, elucidation on this, but um, here I'm showing the. A uh, particularly straightforward case for this analysis. So this is a slight equation of state for a uh, higher uh, central energy density and for a positive beta. And we are varying the coupling parameters of the gauss bonnet And it's clear that um, so when, when alpha is rather small, let's say, this constraint, uh, this condition is satisfied. So this uh, point of the parameter space, uh, these choices of, para of parameters are good, so for what we know. But at the same time, when we consider a second branch of solutions where alpha is, uh, as, is quite big, it's clear that this condition is violated. So points of the parameter space with uh, this alpha, a choice of parameters with uh, this beta and this alpha um, cannot be considered. And of course, we did this analysis for uh, different values of beta and um, different uh, different choices of equational state and central energy density. I'm just showing the clearer plot to understand what we did. So, um, in summary, uh, what we did was studied spontaneous scalarization of neutron stars for the first time uh, for a theory that contained both the Gauss Bonnet and the Ricci scalar couplings, which has, was never done before because uh, so far people just consider or the Gauss Bonnet theory or a Ricci, uh, a Ricci scalar couplings. And uh, we were able to put some preliminary constraints on the coupling parameters simply by consideration on the parameter space or on the properties of the neutron star. And of course, there are still many things to do. We can we could uh, uh, do a stability analysis of neutron stars. And uh, Yorgos this afternoon will talk about black hole stability for the same theory. One could also um, study well-posed initial value problems of such theory, which has not been done so far. 
and we can complicate further our space-time assumptions by adding rotation to our system. Um, so yeah, there is still much to do, but uh, this is what we have been done so far. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Julia? There's one coming in there from Zachariah. Thank you for the talk. What about considering the coupling more general in function of phi? Mm. phi is. Sorry, let me see because I don't see it. Can you repeat? What about considering the coupling more general? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, we could uh, complicate further the, the coupling function. So let me go back to the action. Uh, in principle, we could do, but the point is that um, for what regards the, 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 the triggering of post-sun colorization, so at a linear level, the main term that um, the, 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 the terms that trigger spontaneous colorization is a quadratic coupling. Of course, what could include higher uh, powers of the coupling function. And usually this is, uh, people do so because higher, so like uh, for example, including a phi to the fourth term can uh, uh, render the solution stable, more stable with respect to the just a quadratic coupling. Um, we didn't do so, first of all, for simplicity, and because this is the action that we've been working so far in the other papers, but also because in the black hole papers, uh, so we did a similar analysis, analysis for the case of black holes, and uh, we showed that already including the Ricci scalar in the theory allowed for stability of black hole solutions. So um, it, it wasn't necessary to include higher powers of the scalar field. And so we are kind of expecting the same for neutron stars. Of course, one should do a stable a stability analysis to, to consider this. But at the linear level, and just a quadratic uh, function is uh, enough to trigger spontaneous polarization. Uh, 